Hi, it's me Puamen from Alpha Beta Iron Analytics. With this video, we start an introduction to optimization process in portfolio management. Here we are going to explain why we need optimization in order to construct that portfolio which satisfies individual requirements of the investors. Everything in portfolio management starts with efficient frontier. This graph presents the standard risk return characteristics of investments. On axis X, the graph expresses the risk. On axis Y, a return. The efficient frontier is presented with this curve. Efficient frontier presents so-called efficient portfolios. These are the portfolios which have the best risk return characteristics. Let me remind you why. All portfolios below the efficient frontier are inefficient. There are other combinations, either with better return at the same level of risk or with better risk at the same level of return. For example, this portfolio here is inefficient. Why? Because there is a portfolio with the same risk but better return here or there is another portfolio with the same return but less risk here if you apply the same logic for every one of these portfolios you can conclude that all of them which are below the orange line are inefficient and you should not invest in them therefore this zone below the efficient frontier is not appropriate for investments. Your portfolio should not be there. From other side, everybody of us may dream to invest in this zone, but no possibilities for that. No such portfolios with so high return and so low risk. So, the investor space is divided in two parts. The orange part of the space presents inefficient part. You can construct some portfolios in that area, but they will not be the best. The blue part of the space presents impossible part. No investments are possible there. Therefore, only these portfolios, which are on the borderline, on the frontier between inefficient part and impossible part, should be regarded as efficient. Do you feel how majestic are these portfolios? They lie exactly on the border between inefficiency and impossibility. That is why they are the best combination between assets and these are the only portfolios which you should invest. In this simple way, I try to develop the logic of efficient frontier. If you need more precise explanation about the theoretical base of efficient frontier and how it has been developed, please refer to other our videos or videos from other our colleagues. Now our attention is concentrated on other problem. Where exactly on the efficient frontier to locate our portfolio? Yes, we already know that our portfolio must be on efficient frontier, but it could be here, here, here or here. As we see, all these portfolios are on efficient frontier. Therefore, they are efficient. They are good. But all of them are different. It is not the same to invest in portfolio Y and portfolio Z, isn't it? Portfolio Y provides much less risk, but also much less return than Z. Therefore, we have problem how to decide which portfolio from the efficient frontier satisfies our requirement for expected return and risk. To answer to this question, let's see what are the risk return characteristics of a portfolio. Here is a formula for the portfolio return. Of course, the return of every portfolio is weighted average from the return of the assets involved in it. This is nothing special or strange. Just to test your understanding of weighted average items. If you construct a portfolio from an asset which expected rate of return is 10% and another asset which expected rate of return is 20%, what is the maximum return you can achieve from this portfolio? What do you think? 30%? 10%? 20%? Or what? The right answer is 20%. If you invest entirely in the second asset, which means that your weight in it is 100% and 0% weight in asset 1, only in this case the return of portfolio will be 20%. Any other combination between 1 and 2 will result in portfolio return between 10 and 20. This is just simple application of the logic of weighted mean. However, the risk of portfolio is different from weighted average. As we can see, the risk of portfolio consists of two parts. Yes, it involves the weighted average of the individual risks of assets, this part here. But the most efficient part of the formula is the second part, the covariances between assets. Exactly this part gives the magic characteristics of portfolio management, 
because it allows combination between their risky assets to result in less portfolio risk if the covariance is negative or small. If we take into account that covariance of one asset with itself is in fact its variance, then we can rewrite the formula for portfolio risk in more convenient way. Just mention that here we allow i to be equal to j and then the formula becomes more compact but the meaning is the same. These two formulas describe the risk return characteristics of one portfolio, its return and its risk. The current format is convenient for people which doesn't like matrix form of formula expression. But here I present the same formulas in matrix form. Portfolio return is a multiplication of the matrix of individual return of the asset and the matrix with their weights. Portfolio risk involves again the matrix of weights of the assets. The central part of the risk formula is this important matrix here. We call it variance covariance matrix. On the diagonal of this matrix are the variances of all stocks. Variance of the first asset, variance of the second asset, of third asset, and so on until n. Then the first row presents the covariance between asset 1 and asset 2, between 1 and 3, etc. to n. The same for next row, covariance between asset 2 and 1, 2 and 3 and so on to n. And the same logic until the row n. I also can present the short form of matrix formulas here. These are the formulas for portfolio risk return characteristics. Sometimes people make mistake addressing these formulas to Markowitz, the father of the modern portfolio theory. Actually, these formulas are not modern portfolio theory. They are part of normal statistical calculus. However, the real Markowitz genius has been demonstrated in delivering the theory which explains where on the efficient frontier an investor should locate his or her portfolio. The modern portfolio theory is based on one abstract category, utility. Utility presents our satisfaction from investments. We invest because we expect a return. Everybody of us knows that higher return gives us higher satisfaction, therefore higher utility. But from our experience, we also know that every expected return is connected with risk, uncertainty of this return. We may get it, but also there is a chance to get less or even to lose. So, we hate risk. It distracts our satisfaction from investment. We want to be compensated for the risk taken. This is called risk aversion. Therefore, our utility from investment can be presented on the return risk space with this line. But we do not behave like that. In fact, according to Markowitz, investors have quadratic utility function. What does it mean? Our risk aversion increases exponentially with increasing the risk. This curve here presents such utility function for one investor A. This investor is risk averse. Again, increasing the risk, investor requires increasing the return, which is something like remuneration of taking this risk. But as we see, with increasing risk, dissatisfaction from the risk increases faster. Investor starts worrying about this high level of risk. She or he wants to be paid higher for this enormous level of risk. We can see how the curve increases its bending. After some level of risk, investor cannot take it anymore. The risk is so high that no remuneration can cover the satisfaction from this risk. As a result, investor will not invest at this level of risk. This type of curve we call isoquant. We investors are diverse. Some of us are more adventurous, more courageous. They can take high level of risk and they have low risk aversion. Some of us are more fearful, more worried. These people cannot afford to invest in high level of risk. They are high risk aversion investors. That means that we have different utility isoquants. Like this hypothetical example, investor B is more risk averse than A. She requires much higher remuneration 
for unit risk taken than investor A. That is why her ISO quant is so steep. So, how this idea for utility is connected with portfolio theory? Markowitz apply very simple and elegant way just by combining the ISO quants with the efficient frontier. Here we have the efficient frontier and ISO quant of the low risk averse investor. We just have to, to slip the ISO quant like this until it reaches the efficient frontier. The tangent point actually is portfolio because it lays on the efficient frontier. But this portfolio satisfies the risk aversion utility function of the investor A. Only this portfolio from all others on efficient frontier satisfies investors' requirements. This one and only portfolio maximizes the investor's utility. Let's see how it could be done for a high risk averse investor. When we apply the same procedure for investor B, we obtain the other portfolio. This portfolio maximizes utility for this fearful investor. And here we have the genius outcome of this procedure. Modern portfolio theory affirms that every investor investor should invest only in portfolios located on efficient frontier. According to individual risk aversion characteristics of the investor, she or he will locate the portfolio at different points of the frontier. Low risk aversion investor will invest in portfolios located on upper right part of the efficient frontier. High risk averse investors should invest in portfolios from down left part of the frontier. So far, more or less, we explained the theory, but how can we find that efficient portfolio which is unique only for us. Here we need a mathematical tool. Behind the presented modern portfolio theory there is deep mathematical explanation. Here we skip all these explanations and directly jump to the final result of the theory optimization equation. What we have already explained as a logic of portfolio optimization is entirely involved in this formula. With it, you can find that portfolio which satisfies the requirements of a risk averse investor for more deeply into that formula and how to construct your optimization process in R, please refer to other our videos. For now, I just want to express my thankfulness for spending your time with us. I really appreciate it.